So we are, we are about to begin our next session, which is all about, you know, green building, what and how. After the United States, India has the second largest number of certified green buildings in the world. So, what are green buildings? How are they made? Do they have to be made from scratch? How can we green our buildings and campuses and offices? Where should we start? Now, it's time for us to learn from the experts from India's Green Building Council and Center on how can we all live a more sustainable and resource efficient life. So, I would like to introduce Mr. Anand, who is a Principal Counselor of Indian Green Buildings Council, CIA. And Mr. Anand and his team of CII's Indian Green Building Council is formed and he's there since its inception. He has a work experience spanning over 29 years and he's there with CII since 1996. He is an Indian Green Building Council accredited green building professional and he's been involved in helping architects, builders and corporate in designing green buildings. Thus far, he has helped more than 100 clients in incorporating green designs in building design and construction. He's also involved in IGBC's green townships and cities projects, which includes Amravati City, Dhalera City, Gift City, Sri City, Oryx City, Mahindra World City in India. He has also trained professionals in green building concepts and has thus far conducted more than 210 training programs on green buildings all over the country in Singapore and Dubai. He has worked on several international projects with bilateral agencies. He's now a member working on green building rating system for India, IGBC Green, Township, Cities and Metro programs. He's also associated with World Green Building Council. It's an honor and it is the time for us to, more about, to know more about what are green buildings, how do they work. And it's really a honor and pride for us to have him amidst us. I would welcome Mr. Anand and to guide us, to elucidate us and kind of share the nuggets of your uh, knowledge on green buildings. So the, st the stage is all yours now. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Hope the, the last man on the last row, you are able to hear me. Again, uh, it's a privilege to be a part of uh, YIS program because it always brings a lot of energy. Even the menu is complete. Yeah, menu, what up house and local tips are all given. So it always YAI brings in a lot of innovation in the way in which the programs are created goes on. Once again, very, very pleased to stand in front of you, especially after the lunch break. So, I would love to share, as Ms. Fatima mentioned about guiding, I'm not going to guide or not to bore you with all technical stuff. Collectively, what we have done from the CIS Indian Green Building Council, which is popular in After that, me and my colleague Vikram, Vikram is based in Mumbai. Whatever support you require, we are all available to closely work with you all in order to help you. Sorry for that. This is more comfortable. It was looking like a more like a robo actually. So, okay.
Sorry for that. So I'm not so young actually, I'm 50 years old. That's the reason these things doesn't work with me. Uh, so here we would love to share what uh, India has done with respect to greening the buildings, built environment, how it is going to touch each one of you, whatever you are, whether you are a student, you are an entrepreneur, you are a professional working in uh, industry. So there is a role for each one of you. So what is the true potential of green buildings? So Before I get into green buildings, I would love to explain about why we need uh, green buildings. So as you all know, 40 to 50 percent of the global energy produced is consumed by the building and the construction sector. 40 percent of the solid waste generated is from our building and construction sector. So these two put together results in 40 percent of the global greenhouse gas emissions. So whosoever is living in a house, whosoever is constructing a new project or from an institution like any colleges, when you consume water, when you consume energy, when you generate waste, you are equally responsible for the global warming or the climate change. So though if you are involved in a building sector, you may say that or we may be painted on the negative tone saying that we are a energy guzzlers, we pollute the environment. So, but the good news is with the support and the collective efforts of each one of you sitting here and away from the hall. We have done an enormous amount of work in the last 20 years in order to bring down the energy consumed, water consumed in our buildings, how we can manage the waste in a better way so that our global greenhouse gas emissions comes down drastically low. So that's what I wanted to exp or share with you all for the next 45 to 50 minutes from now. So we are a part of CI is a 125 year old association. Many of you are fully aware you are all actively involved in YI. We are incidentally, we are celebrating 125 years of CIA service to the nation and its citizen, formed in 1895. So the green building word was not so popular in year 2000 when we started this Indian Green Building Council, which is popularly known as IGBC. IGBC stands for Indian Green Building Council, which is a part of CIA, which is a part of CIA. So my chairman, Mr. Jamshedan Godrej, our chairman, the moment we got the land from the unified Andhra Pradesh in Hyderabad at that time, our chairman, Mr. Godrej mentioned, before preaching others to go green, we should showcase that green buildings are viable and green makes business sense once we conceived this building in year 2000-2001. So this building is a CIS Indian Green Building Council headquarters. Whenever you visit Hyderabad, you are most welcome to visit this center, even on a Saturday and Sunday or even in the late in the evening, we will roll out a red carpet, you are more than happy, we will be more than happy to receive you all. So what the center has done is, it was able to bring down the ancient architectural elements, like for example, if you see the central courtyard, you go to a village house 60 kilometers from where we are in Mavi, Mumbai, they would have done it much better than our own office for ages. Or the red color walls, what you see. It, uh, we got the inspiration from the Hava Mahals. If you go to the Hava Mahals, the walls have beautiful micro holes in it. That brings a lot of sunlight, views to the inmates, but at the same time it provides the privacy for the inmates also. So that is how we are able to bring in enormous amount of traditional Indian architectural elements which are all 5,000, 6,000 years old. And we wanted to marry with the modern technology also. You are able to see a solar PV, you are able to see a cooling tower. So what our chairman said was, we wanted to make the tradition and technology coexist. So that's what the center has been conceived right from the day one. And the best part is, the center has been inaugurated by then President, His Excellency late Dr. APG Abdul Kalam, President of India on 14th of July 2004. So after that we never looked back. Whenever he addressed a young audience like you, when he was alive, he always mentioned about green sustainability as well as made a remarks on our CIS IGBC headquarters also. We are very, very grateful for him. So as I said earlier, when the word green building was not so popular, the Indian Green Building Council engaged all the stakeholders like you, students, government, nodal agencies, architects, material manufacturers and contractors and set up the vision also. 
So the vision of the council is to enable a sustainable built environment for all. Whether you are an engineer or an architect or you are working with a corporate, we wanted to touch your lives and enhance the quality of the life. That's what the vision set by stakeholders like you. So with that vision we started. In the process, we want India to become one of the global leaders in sustainable built environment by 2025. So that is the vision with which we all work. So I have to confess here one, one stuff here, one message here or a confess that green buildings are not new to India. If I say that green buildings we are invented, it's not correct actually. Especially the places of worship is very closer to my heart as an individual. You go to a temple, you go to a church, you go to a mosque, Gurudwara, which has been constructed even before air conditioners, why air conditioners, even before electricity was invented. Some of the places of worship you will be able to recollect, they are constructed in 10th century, can you believe it? It is still standing tall and it will stand tall forever. What we are trying to tell is green buildings are not new to us, it is in our DNA. Only thing is in the last 50 to 60 years, some of us, we wanted to ape a building from a German or from a European climate, we are not blaming them. Whereas the climatic conditions in German or US or Europe is completely different from what's happening in Mumbai or Chennai or Gurgaon. So that is the reason we always, we in IGBC say green buildings are not new to India. Having said that, 21st century has thrown open a lot of challenges on each one of us. The land is not available. The water is not available for every citizen in this country. Access to power, access to a good school, college, whatever, you can, the list goes on and on. So that is the reason we said that we cannot stay back or rest on our own past laurels, saying that green buildings, we know it very well. So how do we make our own buildings and our own way of living more than the buildings? The lifestyle changes what it requires in the green building environment we will love to cover so that we handle the resources in a much, much better way. So here again, we define green buildings in IGBC way in a very brief but very impactful way. So as far as our own definition goes on, a green building is the one, number one, it conserves natural resources. Number two, it reduces the water consumption. Number three, optimizes the energy efficiency or energy usage. Four, the materials, how do I generate less waste during a building is under construction or during an operation. Last but not the least is, it provides a much more healthier space for every citizen on the planet here. So this is how the IGBC's definition on green building goes on. So if you are not able to understand, you are not an architect or engineer, don't worry. We will make this things very simple, that is how the CII is very unique. Like what we have five fingers in our palm, the green building is the one which addresses number one, the site related concerns. Number two is on water, third is on energy, fourth is on materials, fifth is on indoor environmental quality. Even if you are not able to recollect the definition what I said a couple of seconds ago before, don't worry. The site, water, energy, materials, indoor air quality. How do we address these five areas in a holistic way is called as green building. Because many a times when we talk to people or when we started this movement in 2001, people have spent enormous amount of time on the air conditioner, look and feel, glass, lighting. They thought that by doing energy efficiency alone, my building can be called as a green building. It is not. When we all went to school, I have to pass get a minimum pass mark on all the five subjects, correct? Even if I don't like max or the max teacher, if I don't get a minimum 35 marks of a minimum pass mark, they will not allow me to go to the next grade. So that is how a green building not only addresses on only on energy efficiency. Whether you like it or not, you have to address on all the five elements which you mentioned. So how do you deal a site related issues? Water, energy, material and indoor air quality. We will see it in a greater detail uh, from now on about these areas. So as I said earlier, these five elements, site, water, energy, materials and indoor air quality is not new to us. Even today, however modern we are, when you are about to start a new construction, what is the first thing we will do in a site? Uh, we, we perform a 
bhumi puja because the whole world calls this as a part of the land the land deal says that this 100 acre is owned by me whereas we indians what we do we call it as a earth whereas we call it as a mother earth mother has to be treated how mother has to be treated very softly and gently correct though the land belongs to me when i move in people when i disturb when i want to go for a double basement for car parking below the ground i may disturb lot of flora and fauna which is invisible to my eyes also that is the reason we offer bhumi puja knowingly or unknowingly if i am going to step on you or disturb your uh, livelihood or this one please pardon us so that is the reason green buildings are not new to us even spiritually also the moment you get up in the morning we all look at the sun actually so we worship sun water ether and uh, fire as a god or a goddess or the spiritual also that's the reason green buildings are not new to in the indian cultures we need not look at the western world so green buildings are in in our dna actually so how do we bring it back that is what we are all trying to do so what it started as a one building from our own igbc headquarters with only a very small office building slightly bigger than this conference hall 13000 square feet of a condition space with a collective effort from all the citizens of the country today as i am talking to you all india has more than 5700 plus projects right from a jammu and kashmir we have a school and andaman nicobar we have a dr b r ambedkar institute it's a big institution engineering college certified by igbc right from shillong to surat on the west coast what i'm saying is india is not so big when compared to the land, land mass of americas or australias or canadas but india still has five distinct climatic zones what is applicable for mumbai design i cannot take it to pune the weather pattern is completely different what is applicable for gurgaon i cannot take it to somewhere in chennai or trichy or coimbatore down south the weather profiles are completely different that's the reason india is very unique though the land mass is not so big india offers a uniqueness even the tea or a vada pav served here you go 40 kilometers away it will be completely different on the texture color and the look and feel as well as the taste so there is a uniqueness about indian contest but as we see the western buildings most of the buildings will look like a oven actually because of the cold weather and the snowfall what they have they want every building envelope to be closed they don't want the external air to come inside whereas in india we want everything to be breathable including the shirt we are what you are as well as the wall that's the reason india is very unique we should know indian contest indian heritage indian and, and uh, what do you call the architectural elements so i will get into the details at a macro level if you want any micro level data please let me know so we will run through it because the time given by miss patima and the oi team is only 1 hour it's like a t20 match actually because minimum i need 2 and 1/2 hours or 3 hours to tell what is the green building in a greater detail that is a one day match i can understand you have to hear many people so literally i may run through in some of the slides pardon me for that so as far as the site is concerned the moment you get a plot as we said the entire top soil the first few inches has lot of microorganisms which has taken 500 to 600 years to get the richness but many a times what we do in a conventional site we strip the entire top soil and send it across and dump it elsewhere whether there is a flora and fauna or a tree please preserve the entire natural resources at your site so that's what we say these are the few examples we have taken from all over the country how they preserved the rock how they preserved the trees even some of the sites they numbered the trees even before the architects and civil engineers have come to the site they numbered the trees and said architects design should be built around the environment not cutting the trees that is how we follow and this is being encouraged by our green building rating program so this is our own igbc headquarters building so hyderabad is known for what can i get some quick responses carminar thanks for the quick responses something some responses from this side vikram 
Biryanis. Water, Vikram. Biryanis, Charminar, what else? Ramoji Film City. Any girls? Huh? <laughs> Pearls. So the list goes on and on, like Charminar, Golconda, Ramoji Film City. But none of us have said Hyderabad is one of the very unique city in the whole of Asia which is known for natural rock formation. Anybody has visited Hyderabad, they will know it. Even when we got the site, these rocks were there. Because these rocks, we done an analysis and the testing also. This is there for the last hundreds and hundreds of years ago. So the mandate given to an architect is, from 35 feet from my building footprint, he cannot disturb these rocks. That is a Lakshman Rega for him actually. So that is the reason the rocks are preserved. Whereas our own neighbor, the moment he got the plot, what he did? He blast, thank you, thank you. Uh, blasted all the rocks and called the architect to construct a house or an office. So the entire green building design revolves around designing and constructing the buildings in harmony with environment or the surroundings. Still, if you are not believing it, next time when you go to Delhi, the moment you get down into the new Moti Bagh, which is in the heart of the city, this is a 110 acre government property. 110 acre property in the heart of the new Delhi city. Here the, the trees are numbered. And if you see the photograph very keenly, are not disturbed. Same is the case here. Conventional building, they had have taken out those trees. So the whole building design of 110 acres, the lot of ministers and secretaries, higher officials, they stay here. In the middle of a new Delhi city is able to go to green and adopt all of our features. So here, uh, getting into this hall itself was a lot of traffic jam like this, correct? In the morning and the afternoon. We in IGBC encourage people to use the public transport. How do I, how do I use the public transport? If my office or a home is not closer to a bus stop, or even if the bus stop is not closer, if my office doesn't provide a shuttle service to get to my metro station, I will be forced to bring my bike or an individual private driven car. So IGBC encourages people to use the public transport. So this former mayor of Bogota, he beautifully articulated, a developed country is not a place where poors own the cars. It's where the rich use the public transport. It says it all. There may be a lot of challenges. You see the Ahmedabad the BRT. The individual cars lanes are more crowded. So if I drop the car and get into my bus, I may be able to reach faster to my destination and my emissions from the tailpiece will also be less. So that IGBC rating program encourages. Though there are challenges are there, but still if you see many of the cities are able to provide a much more better alternates. So the summer is fast approaching, correct? The moment May or June, peak summer arrives in Mumbai or Chennai or Calcutta, the moment you get up in the morning, how does the morning newspaper headline read? What would be the headlines? The peak summer. Mumbai has recorded the highest temperature in the last 100 years. That is how the headline will be. And every year they say the same thing. I don't know how come they say. <laughs> every year they say this is the highest temperature record in the last 100 years. Why? More and more we bring in concrete, the rooftop or the roads are with a tar or a black top or a concrete, it is going to absorb enormous amount of heat from the daytime and re-radiate back into the atmosphere. That is why the microclimate temperature goes up. Even in the May afternoon month here, if the temperature is 40 degrees centigrade in Navi Mumbai where we are presently, you go to a village house 20 kilometers away the temperatures will be minimum 5 to 6 degrees lower if they don't have concrete or much of uh, blacktop roads. So how do we address this? 
these are all the solutions already implemented in many igbc certified projects that is the beauty about indian green building council we are not only talking on the philosophical uh, or theoretical way these are all really implemented for example the car parking spaces in the government office on my right hand side hope you are able to see instead of having a concrete paver blocks they gone ahead with the pervious concrete which will allow the water to percolate during monsoon and it has lot of greeneries in between the second one they have a beautiful canopy the trees are chosen in a such a way the entire concrete road below will be covered in next to 2 years this is in a mumbai in a colony so what we are trying to tell is the solutions are already available for a common man and it is not going to cost you a bomb this is how it has been done in a very high rise buildings like a hotels some of the hotels they are would love to have a green lawn on one floor the floor above due to the functional requirements they wanted to have a some other roof surface there also we are painted with a white color paint you are able to see this the white color paint is a very very unique paint which absorbs all the heat and it will not allow the heat to come through the roof imagine you are planning to buy a residence or a apartment in a high rise tower what is the first thing you will do go to a developer and if he has 24 floors 24th floor is the topmost floor whether you would love to buy the 24th floor why because we are all more worried about the heat coming through the roof on top of my floor that is the reason we are comfortable on the 23rd and below not the 24th even an office also normally the office topmost floor nobody wants to take it as a tenant or a lease we don't walk we don't want to walk because of the heat penetration through the topmost roof how do we address it by having a greenery are having a high sri paint what we saw earlier these are all since the program is happening in mumbai i have taken more and more mumbai example because people think that mumbai is very costly here the land or a roof area is 1 square inches million dollar i do agree but still they have done it this is in godrej bhavan in the heart of the old city and this is in pawai british gas this is on the roof level fifth floor even if you don't believe my words this is a thermal imaging has been thermography has been clicked wherever you have greenery and especially wherever you have the roots of the tree the temperatures are lower when compared with the concrete so this is easily doable in our existing homes and offices also this is a classical example still if you are not convinced one of the architects house bungalow i should not say it is house bungalow on the outskirts of bangalore and mysore he has constructed a roof wherein she is cultivating rice can you believe it? it is not at the ground floor the photograph is clicked by us actually it is on the first floor actually you are able to see that tree top tree height this is the first floor the entire treated water is used for the paddy cultivation can you believe it a roof that grows rice So it will avoid the heat ingress through the roof at well as well as ensures the food security of our country also so city like mumbai we don't have that kind of a space correct so the now the trend is the entire wall all along the building you can have a greenery we call it as a living wall living walls are done in many places including our own office so when you have a lawns or a greenery on the wall as well as on the roof in fact we are working with another developer in gurugram so instead of having an ornamental greenery like this he has having a living wall wherein he is trying to cultivate chillies and tomatoes all along the wall imagine if you buy a kitchen next to the living wall you put your hand out pluck the tomatoes and put it on the tawa right into the tawa in your kitchen days are not far living walls are going to be a reality so when you overdo greenery you not only get uh, chilies and tomatoes you may even attract goats and chicken for your biryanis also so on the lighter side next our green building rating program of cii encourages emission free emission free vehicle today only we are talking about electric vehicle you see ci has purchased a electrical vehicle in 2003 can you believe it this is our own in igbc headquarters 
whenever we used to come for this kind of a small presentations within hyderabad not in mumbai we used to take the vehicle in 2002 and 2003 people used to peep into this car there is no tail piece there is no pollution coming out of the car what is this car they used to peep around now what's happening the bikes and cars are all electrical driven so the innovation by that architects is the entire car park shed is made out of solar pv this is a bike shed which looks like a butterfly wing if i have a electric driven bike i go to the office park it next to this charge the bike as i work after 8 hours i come out it is fully charged by the solar power what you are trying to tell us we are only giving a idea and then people are able to come out with innovative solutions how do you integrate it next is on we are closely working with all the smart cities how do we encourage people using the bicycle the pedestrian friendly as well as electrical vehicles are getting encouraged and uh, water is polluted correct the moment you get a glass of water some people they don't take it they always want a particular branded water air is polluted so we are not even left the night sky imagine you are a night sky watcher you wanted to watch the teles uh, using your telescope you wanted to watch the night sky movement of the stars and uh, celestial bodies if you put a telescope in a pavai in your house what do you see no car sometimes people used to say that you will be able to spot only the next next uh, hoardings light actually artificial light that is what you will be able to see night sky is not at all visible stars are there the moment you put a telescope you are not able to spot the stars because of the smoke as you have seen in this picture actually because the whole city is illuminated the roads are over illuminated the hoardings are over illuminated many of us would have gone to dubai correct the moment you are about to land into the dubai you are able to spot the sheikh said road because of the over illumination from your aircraft itself so the moment you over illuminated there are lot of birds insects they only travel during night time what are they called as they are called as nocturnal nocturnal birds whereas the moment you illuminate over illuminated they may think that sunrise has happened there are a lot of flowers they blossom during only night time which may not be immaterial to me but the moment you put the this building also should be illuminated means we put a high voltage lamp and put it on the envelope that is how it happens in many of the conventional buildings that we call it as a night sky pollution a green building addresses that as well so how do we avoid over illuminating our buildings so that we don't disturb the nocturnal nocturnal uh, living beings or the insects at the same time we wanted to bring down the power consumption as well universal design it is in 8 out of the 10 buildings we don't have this kind of a facility if somebody is differently able they need an external help they need an external help to be carry to some other places they don't have an access so this is being acknowledged in our rating program that is at a macro level at the site next is on water so how do we bring down the water consumption by going in for a ultra low flow tap showers or urinals incidentally the urinal what you see is installed in our igbc headquarters in hyderabad in 2003 can you believe it India's first waterless urinal is installed in our IGBC office still it is functional there is no plumbing line on top of that so go for a dual flushes go for a low flow ultra low flow fixtures when you are going to choose a plant or a species of plant is very important many a times when you wanted to have a lawn or a greenery on your landscape area people choose on their own if you don't have a landscape architect we may land up in choosing a wrong species if i take a species from middle east or from somewhere from europe and put it in mumbai the climatic conditions soil conditions are completely different from europe and dubai it will not survive here then i'll be forced to put more manures and more water that is the reason we call it as a naturalized species or 
we call it as a native or a drought tolerant somebody from jaipur will be able to tell us some of the plants in jaipur or in the desert region they don't even need water actually still these flower beautiful flowers are there it can be part of your landscape in mumbai as well without requiring any water at all except for the initial watering so we call these as a naturalized species which doesn't require any water at all next is on measuring and monitoring if somebody is asking me how much money i carry on my wallet i'll be able to tell correct or how much money you spend in taking a taxi from airport to this place i'll be able to tell to the last decimal but if you ask me how much water i consumed while taking a shower today morning if you ask me i don't have an answer especially when you stay in a five star hotel if my organization has paid 10000 rupees per night what do i do uh, i switch on the shower and think that i have paid 10000 rupees and uh, while taking a shower also i try to become like a singer like i keep singing like jesus was or sp balas brahmani whatever song comes or mohammad rafi songs you keep on singing for 15 minutes how much water i would have consume 100 150 liters per shower or as the national building code says every family or per capita water available in india is 120 liters per day for all the domestic applications per day what is being measured only can be monitored what is being measured very well can be only monitored very well so that is the reason we ask these apartment owners to install water flow meters right in the entrance of the washrooms in their apartments before i step into the washroom it reads the reading correct that's what you and i do when you walk into the petrol pump what is the first thing you will ensure ah so the re- meter reading is 100 you get into the washroom take a shower and come out if it reaches 150 what does it mean we are consumed 50 liters for a shower that awareness alone has brought down the water consumption in this high rise apartment in bangalore they have tried several measures for the last 10 years having a campaign poster uh, whatever videos whatsapp nothing worked whereas this meter has worked wonders for them now they don't even buy tankers even in a peak summer based on the success they have even installed in the kitchen also so these meters are not even going to cost you more than 1200 rupees a piece install it one tanker cost itself 3000 rupees comes down to your society can save it in one day so that is the kind of a return on investment you are talking about next is on natural way of treating the waste water we all use our washrooms canteen cafeteria all of them they generate black and the gray water the black and gray water in a conventional building it goes to a sewage treatment plant which has an enormous amount of motor pumps and the chemicals to treat them whereas here it is a natural way of treating it it is in our own office what we consider as a waste in the black water and the gray water becomes a food for these guys these plants these plants has a very unique property they thrive on the waste what we consider as a waste and give the oxygen through the leaves and stems to the black and the gray, gray water below and it becomes a clear water and it meets the pollution control board norms on bod cod ph turbidity whatever you call it you can use it for irrigation you can use it for washroom wherever there is no human contact this is being done still if you are not believing it one of the small house owner in chennai he came to our office and saw this phyto remediation he has done the stp on the compound wall can you believe it small house in chennai the compound wall treats the entire gray water from the kitchen sink not from the wc the kitchen the dishwasher the washing machine outlets are all connected to the compound wall in three different levels and the treated water is collected through the small pipe and used for irrigation of these potted plants so it is doable in a small house also it is not that you have to green building means you have to wait for a very big million dollar project to come then only i'll be able to adopt no it is all doable in a our own houses small houses rain water harvesting when we did this house in buneshwar he is a multi millionaire actually he has all the wealth on the earth so instead of storing the rain water he said that normally people store the rain water away from the house correct outside the house 
the roof runoff comes into the tank away from the wall whereas he has put it inside the house number 1 and closer to the kitchen the slab what you see there is a sum below the entire roof runoff water is collected and instead of putting a motor we suggested a small motor which is looks like a mixi motor only to lift it from the sum to this one whereas he has used a hand pump i don't know my son doesn't know how a hand pump looks like this is a hand pump actually so he every day earlier he said that he used to go to gym it seems to lift the weight now he is not going to gym standing next to his spouse he is lifting the water from here to there so the happiness index has also gone up that's what he says on a lighter side so this is what the brings in innovation so how you can do it in your own way so that it is very very beautiful beautiful case study so we are all very familiar with the three r's reduction in the water consumption reuse the water or recharge the rain water so fourth or igbc has brought in is refuse what you have seen in the waterless urinal it doesn't require water at all so that is the fourth or we are talking about reduce reuse recharge refuse imagine many of us uh, go for a cup of coffee correct the coffee is not tasting good we just pour it on the sink the coffee may be 100 or 125 ml of or the, in the cup what is the amount of water i have waste when i throw the 125 ml of coffee in the sink how much water i have wasted 120 ml ah somebody said thousands and hundreds absolutely right when you pour 125 ml of coffee which is prepared at your house or restaurant i not poured 125 ml 130 liters i poured 130 liters is required to get you a cup of 100 125 ml if you calculate the amount of water used in the coffee cultivation taking the beans frying it powdering it getting it to our house that is what we call it as a virtual water i see a lot of youngsters wearing a jeans correct it takes thousands of liters to manufacture a pair of jeans almost 8000 to 10000 amount of liters of water to manufacture one pair of jeans so but when i said to this my son he came up with another rational every trouser i wear after the second use i put it for washing whereas my son wears the jean for 6 months action do the jeans manufacturers consume enormous amount of water on the operational side jeans consumes very wa- less water for maintenance that is on the later side so what i intend to tell is everything you call it as a virtual water please look into it to get a brick to get a tile to get a cloth there is a virtual water available if you are interested i can send this exhaustive list that is on the water on the second side third is on energy this is the most interesting element how do you make your walls more innovative how do you make your walls and the roofs and the glass based on the climatic condition based on your how many people are there whether it is an office or a data center or a retail showroom this is beautifully done in one of my colleagues house in bangalore this is a retro bond two layers of bond brickwork with a yard gap in between stuffed with the eco friendly insulating material in bangalore he was able to consume 40% less power when compared with his neighbor can you believe it bangalore is an air conditioned city though many of you may not believe it's no more but yeah but still bangalore weathers are much better than mumbai and chennai and calcutta as humidities are less so still he is able to save lot of energy so when you talk about a air conditioner people immediately think that there should be a split air conditioner or a window air conditioner or mechanical systems whereas in this photograph what you see the roof hubo in this infosys office acts like an air conditioning system can you believe it we call it as a chilled beam if you are a mechanical engineer you know it it's a chilled beam before pouring the concrete people have put the red color pipe which carries the chilled water on the roof surface the roof is acting like a air conditioning medium next is on the underfloor ventilation if somebody is from bangalore you walk into this puma showroom in indranagar This is IGBC certified green retail shop. 
what the black color boxes you see on the floor the floor acts like a air conditioning medium and it cools the entire space above the space or on the grill the walls are acting like a air conditioning medium what you see on the left extreme walls carry a beautiful layer of water especially on the dry climate like dehradun pune is gulbergas not on a humid weather weather like mumbai so these are all beautifully done so what we are trying to tell us the roof wall envelop are becoming a part of your air conditioning system that's a green building so when a water can travel in pipe gas can travel in pipe why not sunlight that's a question we asked a designer 20 years ago what you see is a sun pipe with a polycarbonate sheet on the top and with a highly reflective medium on the inner surface of the pipe if i not told you it looks like an artificial light glowing here correct not glowing this is in a government office iso office in hyderabad a natural light is taken taken deep inside the office spaces this is an office this is in a house can you believe it the same house in chennai there is no need for artificial light to glow during the day time if you design with the sun pipes which are available in abundance so leds has become the norm i'll go not going into the details don't use greasers geysers are electrical heaters especially the indian counters 90% of the power, or 60% of the power plants are all coal or oil based so the electricity what you get in our house if i use it for geysers or water heaters i am using a high grade energy for doing a low grade job it is like using an ak47 gun to kill an ant or to lift a small pebble can i use a electrically operated big side crane please please henceforth stop using electrical geysers use the solar hot water system so that's what we are trying to do in a green buildings even the building integrated solar pv the solar pv need not be only on the solar hot water system it can become like a wall roof many many applications are there we'll be more than happy to do this biogas the entire organic waste is segregated in a kitchen in a huge apartment in a bangalore the organic waste goes to the biogas plant and the piped gas is given to every single house can you believe it it is able to replace or complement two gas cylinders in a year your own kitchen waste coming as a fuel to your own kitchen actually if you segregate it and treat it at your own site this is an amazing example that is on the energy fourth is on materials slightly i'll run through it whenever you have a old office many times you need not bring down the whole office down demolish and construct a new one this is a classical example in gurugram aditya birla cement fa guys they purchased the old office they made the old office look a brand new one are you able to see this because while constructing the old office already there are a lot of resources be it a brick concrete steel manpower is already involved in it bringing down is very easier whereas the moment you bring it down the entire resources goes for a task whereas they have transformed it into a brand new office in gurugram railway sleepers 50 60 years ago it all used to be made out of beautiful wood nowadays only the railway sleepers on the railway trackers are all made out of concrete the railway sleepers were lying ideal in a dilapidated conditions in the railway godowns near delhi this architect when he constructed a volvo asher volvo corporate office he has taken all the wooden sleepers in a railway auction and used it as a second skin in a high rise modern mnc corporate office can you believe it that's why the indian philosophy is there is nothing called waste in the system what i consider as a waste becomes a beautiful resource for others so this has been well showcased in this construction waste management every city faces a biggest problem how do i dump the construction waste management whereas in a green building we encourage the contractors to segregate brick steel finishes whatever you do it in a better way and use it elsewhere see when we worked with the delhi metro rail corporation the entire waste generated in the construction process 
they made a beautiful park in the new delhi can you believe it the pipes and others have become an ornamental element in a hotel in madurai down south we asked them to segregate the plastic and the wines and the beer bottles in the hotel but the gardener found lot of spare time he beautifully stacked it up when you stack it up the material value or the repurchase value has gone up the principals are the own manufacturers of these beer bottles they offered a much better price every day they generate enormous amount of money also just by segregating the old material and whenever you buy even a small cement bag from now on ask whether it is a green cement bag what do you mean by green cement we all know that we are all having lot of coal fired boilers in our power plants the moment you burn coal you are left with fly ash fly ash is used for making cement and blocks that's what we call it as a green when you have a tetra pack juice for 20 rupees you have the juice and drop the juice correct do you know how much is the worth of juice and how much is the tetra pack if you pay 20 rupees for a fruity juice which one is costlier the juice or the pack juice is only 4 rupees worth tetra pack is 15 rupees which one you drop somebody picked up all the tetra packs cut it into smaller pieces made a beautiful table top using eco friendly resin which can become a tables like this so there are a lot of young entrepreneurs are needed in, in the indian contest who will be able to manage the waste in a better way and come up with the innovative ideas you can make more money also the recycled content that's what we call it as recycled content the moment you cut a teak tree the well grown teak wood takes minimum 25 years if you plant a sapling today there is bamboo which is used in this retail shop on the ceiling bamboo is a nature's or god's wondrous grass we say every day it grows minimum few mm actually so this is what we call it as a rapidly renewable material whenever you are going to take any wood material please check it out what is the source or where this where is it coming from having said about the recycled material rapidly renewable where it is coming from also regionally source it we are not saying no to italian marble do it but basic raw material like your steel sand aggregate should all come closer to the building site this is another interesting project we worked with uh, karnataka police housing uh, police quarters this house for two police family police officers family has been constructed in 17 days can you believe it this is all the photographs clicked the site 17th day they had a grave operation and started living it that is the first part second part is not even generated 1 mg of waste can you believe it that's the beauty here we all call it as a pre construction or pre fabricated buildings this is going to be the norm actually over a period of time so that is on the materials fifth is on indoor environmental quality most of the time nowadays 20 hours in a 24 hours cycle we are all spending in a conditioned space like this moment you get into a car the car is air condition your living rooms are air condition bedrooms are air condition classrooms are air condition offices are air condition how clean is the air especially 1400 people have walked into this convention center i would have carried lot of dust in my shoes under so soles or in the slippers sole so before you walked into the space or the auditorium we call it as a entry way systems they should all capture the dust and keep it within themselves and the air conditioner also should have a beautiful filter mechanism so that we will not get any kind of a pollutants back into our systems whether it is mechanically or naturally ventilated buildings the systems we can go green next is we are not only talking about energy friendly environment friendly techniques or products green building also talks about people friendly that is the reason the moment you buy a brand new house or somebody has painted the wall in your office you are not able to walk into the office next day correct because of the chemical present in all the finishes be it a paint adhesive sealants or if somebody is having an asthma or any respiratory problems it all the more aggravates mainly because of the chemical present in all the finishes please check it out from henceforth whatever you buy even a paint can please check it out how green it is how do you know it is green or not we call it as a voc voc stands for what volatile organic compound the moment you buy a medicine for you or your family what is the first thing you do 
Ah, immediately you will see the expiry date. But when you want to buy a paint can, you do that? Because you will only tell the color, texture and budget to your contractor and leave it. Please go beyond the color, texture and the budget. Say that the VOC limit, lower the better. I am not marketing these brands. Please check it out in the containers also, next time when you buy. And demand, if it is not there, please demand the dealer. And it is not expensive also. Next element is on the daylight. Nobody would love to sit in the jailed atmosphere which doesn't bring the daylight, doesn't provide your views, correct? That's what a famous, a beautiful quote, quote unquote uh, by Thomas Hayes, the light. The God's eldest daughter is the principal beauty in a building. Incidentally, 300 days in India, all the buildings get a beautiful daylight. So how do you bring the daylight? That's what we want to do, encourage in the green buildings. These are all beautiful uh, homes, offices. They have done a very beautiful architectural elements to bring in daylight deep inside the office spaces and homes. Next to most neglected is the housekeeping chemical. One is the housekeeping staff are also human beings and they are part of our ecosystem. Second is when you mop this entire floor with a highly chemical intensive, the mopped water will also poured into the nala. It goes into my creek. It goes into my water body. That is the reason many a times you find, without any reason, lot of fish and other creatures in the water body die and it all starts floating. The housekeeping chemical is also equally important. They all should be people friendly. That is on the five elements. The YA team also asked me to talk about the existing buildings. It is not that every new building alone can go green. Intentionally, I have taken a 100-year-old office building in Mumbai. You all will be able to see this building, correct? Or at least you will be able to relate. This is Tata's group headquarters called as Bombay House, named after the city of Bombay. So this is 110-year-old building. When we started working with them for the last 10 years, we ripped this building apart conceptually. The full credit goes to the team members. They identified opportunities in every single location. The flooring, the lighting, the air conditioning, carpet, modular furniture, renewable energy sources, and it is a small, small plot. The building line and the property line are the same. There is not even a compound wall. There is not even a setbacks. Many challenges are there. 100 year old building. When we walked in, they were consuming almost 200 electrical units per square meter per annum. We call it as an energy performance index. The full credit goes to them by implementing various measures. Now they are less than 100. Can you believe it? 50% reduction in a 100 plus year old existing office. Many projects I can go next door to Tata's Bombay houses are TCS, Tata Consulting Services. They have done these measures. And even a colony where you are living in a multi-dwelling apartment, that can also go green. Can anybody relate where this colony is located in? Where this colony is located? Any wild guesses? Last time when I asked the question, somebody said it's Goa. They're seeing the scenic beauty and the terrain. But it's actually Chembur, hardly 20 kilometers on my right hand side. Chembur in Mumbai, can you believe it? This is the HP's residential colony wherein hundreds of family they live. This is a 60, 70 years old colony. We worked with them. Even an existing apartment can go green. So these are the measures they implemented. I will not repeat it. Amazing colony. They have a bicycling track, uh, track now, they have a yoga center, they have the market which has been ethnically developed, as you are able to see this is a marketplace. There is a saloon, there is a, uh, there is a, and, and you all, all the grocery stores are all beautifully done in an ancient architectural way, ethnic way. So this beautiful colony to go and visit. So by doing all this, what is the benefit you will get? One, this reduces the energy. Your energy bill comes down. Imagine you are operating in an office building which is IGBC rated, you will be consuming 15,000 megawatt hours of electricity less per million square feet when compared with other buildings. These buildings by doing all these measures will save 40,000 to 45,000 kiloliters per annum per million square feet. See the amount of water you are able to save. It brings down the water bill and the saved water is available for your own countrymen away from the boundary. You have an impact beyond your boundaries and able to bring down the GHG emissions. We said that we are the one seen as a globally emitting lot of emissions. But by doing all these green measures, 
will be able to bring down the global warming or the ghg emissions from the built environment and we are able to bring in more and more 500 600 megawatt worth of renewable energy sources has been installed we are able to divert construction waste to the tune of 400 to 500 tons per million square feet reaching a landfill because now the land is not even available for a school to be constructed office to be constructed how government can give a land for dumping our waste generated in a city so by having an effective mechanism by adopting our green principles we'll be able to divert material reaching them these are all the tangible benefits intangible benefits people are more happier in a green building in fact to some of the officers they hired a medical team and a hr team to do a survey exhaustive survey for an year the absenteeism levels are coming down in that office can you believe it the medical expenses borne by the management on the direct employees are coming down in a green building when you are housed in a green building attrition rates are coming down in an it offices because of the green building infrastructure these are the intangible benefits one can envisage these numbers are all proven and it is available in our many of the reports this is a cross section of our own office igbc headquarters we call it as a better places for people how it is aesthetically environmentally and people friendly techniques are adopted all over so that people are more happier and we do have a rating program why you need a rating program you may be wondering we only said that india is a 5000 year 6000 year history but still we need a rating program to define green because last time when we did a training program after one day we asked what do you mean by green building somebody said that sir if i paint a green color paint on the wall and select a green color glass can you get a platinum rated i said that i do love the color green but it goes beyond the color of a paint or color of a glass that's the reason we have to define what do you mean by a green home what do you mean by a green office what do you mean by a green airport so it has to be defined that is the reason we need rating program it has transformed the market also and igbc is the only council in the whole world 90 countries are having council uh, councils across the world which is part of the world green building council none of them have 25 rating programs we are the only council in the whole world to have 25 different rating programs to suit every building typology so the incremental cost is coming down when we constructed our own office it was costlier 18% more so now the incremental cost is almost zero actually if you design it by the word go right from the day one if you design as per the norms it is cheaper and many governments are giving incentives i'll not go into the details of the incentives and the last one is on the health and well being so energy bill coming down water bill coming down that is for the owner to get benefited what is in for me you may be wondering so these are all beneficial for individuals who are working or studying in a green school or a green office that's what we call it as a health and well being so we started off by five elements of nature panchabhutas correct so how these green building measures of igbc touches our five senses that is how the five elements of nature then sight water energy materials and indoor air quality of igbc how it touches my five senses and enhances my physical emotional intellectual and societal benefits it enhances the quality of the life so that is how we in igbc see the rating program so when an individual the airport is green t20 airport is one of the world class airport in the whole world which has gone by design as a green green rated platinum rated airport so when the airport is goes green the navi mumbai municipal corporation i don't know how many of you have seen that a government office is igbc rated the schools are igbc rated data centers retail so everything goes green and the whole city goes green whether it is an existing or a new city we can all go green so what is the opportunity for all of you i don't know what is your background so it offers an enormous amount of opportunity for all the young indian forums and members and non members also in engaging you all in the green building movement to bring in more awareness and start up new company so that the materials are available in abundance and affordable also this is what we call it as a three years so when we did our building in 2000 some of the glasses carpet and waterless urinals were not available in india but now you see there is a huge potential 300 million these materials are available if you want to become a entrepreneur you are most welcome in the green building space the materials the consultancy energy simulation testing labs you name it 
green buildings offers a huge potential for each one of the young Indians member present here. There's a huge market potential in the space. Green Pro is a certification. Next time when you buy a cement, pa cement or steel, look for this logo. Cement, concrete, thousand products are certified. I'll take another one minute. Mati. So this all talks about thousand products and this is recognized in the UN also. So to put it in a nutshell, IGBC's green building rating program is holistic in nature. So every one of us, whether you are an architect, engineer, owner, occupant, client, entrepreneur, as a citizen, you can all demand a green building. You all play a very, very vital role. We in IGBC will be more than happy to involve you because in the last 20 years from 2001 onwards, you are the one who are able to inspire a whole lot of people, bring in innovative solutions. And every architect and engineer and your own team members involved in construction industry can get trained by ourselves and become an IGBC AP. If you are a student, you are able to get a better university for your masters. Or even some of the leading uh, corporates, when they are looking for an engineer and architect, if you are an IGBC accredited green building professional, you are able to get a better salary and a better breakthrough and a better systems. So kindly block your diary for our annual event. We are coming back to Mumbai, Mumbai on 28th to 31st of October. There is a world's mecca of green buildings is a conference called Green Building Congress. In 2001 it started, we had only hundreds of people like this. Last year we had 7,500 people in Hyderabad. So kindly block your diary between 28th to 31st of October in Mumbai. We had the Honorable Minister, thousands of people from across who's who from the country and the world has come and addressed. It talks about cities, mobility, landscape, homes, you name it. It's a wide variety of things happening in Grand Hyatt in Mumbai. Kindly block you, all young Indian, uh, uh, young Indian members are all invited for the workshop. So what it began as one building in 2001, as an IGBC, CIS IGBC headquarters, now it has become a movement. Green building has become a movement with 5,000 projects, 7 billion square feet going green. The full credit goes to people like you and this belongs to each one of you present here and away from this hall. And if you are an young engineer or an architect or an entrepreneur, green building requires enormous amount of knowledge. Anyhow you have it, you are with a good institution. And if you are a passionate professional and there is a need actually, somewhere I may have a big knowledge and passionate about a topic. But if there is no need or requirement in the market, my passion and knowledge is not so great. Whereas you have a knowledge, you have a passion, and there is a huge demand, need, and requirement in the market. That is what a green building space offers. It touches all the three. So we in IGBC will be more than happy to work with all the young Indian members here. So to sum it up, ladies and gentlemen, the green building movement has picked up a lot of momentum, but still a long way to go. Then, uh, India is seeing a paradigm shift in the way in which the buildings are designed, getting constructed and getting operated. So this is one of the award winning school kid. When we conducted a recently a painting competition, a seventh grade school children amazingly articulated in one, whatever I tried to tell in the last one hour, it says it all in one particular drawing or a painting. So whatever you do from now on, we in IGBC humbly request each one of you to become a green ambassador to spread the awareness on green buildings and implement all these measures as you would have seen. These are all very simple. It's not a rocket science. Green think in whatever you perceive. So the places where we live in houses, they adopt our IGBC rating program. The places where we learn, schools, colleges, campuses are going green. Places where we work, the government offices, corporate offices, IT offices, places where we shop, the DMARTs, Reliance Trends and other, other retail showrooms, the places where we play. This is a stadium in Hyderabad, the Motera Stadium in Ahmedabad, they are all going green with IGBC. Places where we travel, the MMRDA, Mumbai, all the metros are going green. So how do we predict the future? I would love to sum it up by a very powerful quote which inspired me. The best way to predict the future is to design it. So let us all design it in a much more greener way. I would love to sum it up by our own father of the nation said, the world has enough resources for everybody's need, but not for everybody's greed. That says it all because we are going to add more and more buildings. Young kids, they want a more better offices, schools, hospitals, manufacturing units. The building sector is going to grow in leaps and bounds, but when we have this in mind, so we'll be able to bring in our 
ancient wisdom, 6,000 years old wisdom, and to make it into contemporary designs, which will be able to make tradition and technology can coexist. Beauty and benefits can go e coexist. So let us all go green. Thank you for your valuable time and patient listening. Thank you once again. For any support, you can make a note of my email ID if you are interested. Thank you so much, Mr. Anand. It was a beautiful session that really inspired all of us to adapt, uh, you know, environment-friendly technology. And I'm sure most of us would take all that nuggets of knowledge that he shared. Just appreciating his presence. We're just giving you this grow box, sir, which is a part of what we were discussing all about. Thank you very much.